Hey everybody, Matt here. Thanks for stopping by and welcome to Imagine Then Make. In this video, we're going to do some more work with LibreCAD on the laptop computer. Specifically, we're going to look at drawing using the command line. Now, I'm going to turn on my camera and you'll watch me sketch with a pencil and a piece of paper a quick drawing of a part that we want to draw very accurately in LibreCAD. All right, so I got a piece of graph paper here and a pencil, and I'm just going to make a really quick sketch of a part that I want to draw up in LibreCAD. So I'm going to mark my origin location there and I'm going to draw a horizontal line and a vertical line and basically I'm making a large rectangle and the dimensions this is going to be 22.9 inches this way and 18.625 inches this way because we're drawing in 2D there is no thickness to this rectangle I'm going to have two circles put one somewhere over there and another one somewhere over there and these are both going to be 12 inch 12 inches in diameter okay and we're going to mark the center of each circle again from the origin and the origin is located at 0 comma 0 this is the x-axis and the y-axis the center for the left hand circle is going to be 5.75 inches in the x direction and 11.5 inches in the y direction. And then the center for the right hand circle, let's put this at 17.125 inches and 7.250 inches. So what I'm trying to demonstrate is you could put any numbers in here at all for your dimensions, depending on what your design requirements are, because ultimately these numbers are gonna get typed into the command line box. So you're not relying on having any of these entities line up on the grid. All right, and let's just add a couple more features here. Let's just draw some small, these are gonna be rectangles. They look almost like squares, but they're rectangles. And let's just say that the, that those shapes are 1.25 inches this way and 1.5 inches this way so they're not quite square and that the distance between these rectangles is let's call it an eighth of an inch 0.125 inches okay so this first one this one the corner is going to be located at let's put it at point seven five inches in the x direction 
and 1.25 inches oops 1.125 inches in the y direction so we know the width we know the height we know the distance between each of the four rectangles and we know where the corner is of the first one that is this one so that gives us enough information to go back to LibreCAD and start drawing using the command line. All right, so now that we've got our paper sketch done, let's go ahead and start drawing. So I'm gonna clear what's on here. And I'm also gonna use the clear command in the command line history and output box. So everything is starting from scratch. Uh, I'm going to leave the grid the way it is, and I'll show you what the ramifications are of that shortly. So let's go ahead and draw the first rectangle. So I've already clicked in, in the command line box to enter the clear command. So command is already blue. Let's type in the rectangle command, R-E-C-T. And now for the first corner, I want 0, 0, and for the second corner, I want 22, sorry, 0.9 inches for in the x direction and 18, 18.625 in the y direction. Okay, so it drew what looks like a rectangle, only we can't see the whole thing. So let's hit escape to exit the rectangle command, left click into the command line box, and type in ZA for zoom auto. And there's our large rectangle. So just as a sanity check, we could click on the measurement tool, click on distance point to point, and we'll click on the snap tool. We'll snap on an entity. Uh, let's see, let's actually snap on, what we wanna do is snap on an endpoint. So let's click on this snap and see it already moved. So if I just get close to, there's only four endpoints, right? Four corners of the rectangle. All I have to do is get close to one of them in particular and it snaps there. So if I left mouse click and then move to the corner, then in the bottom right left hand corner of the screen, that is this area right down here, you'll see that it measures 22.9 in the x direction and 18.625 in the y direction, which is what we wanted. And we should say also that if I look at the current drawing preferences under the options menu and I look at the units, we are in inches. The format's in decimal, it defaults to four um, decimal places. Likewise, angles are in decimal degrees with two decimal places. Okay, so that's why this measurement is 22.9 inches in the x direction and 18.625 inches in the y direction. And of course, at the risk of being redundant, there are all kinds of different units that you could work in. Again, refer to that first video that I did and I explain that a little bit in more detail. Okay, so there's our rectangle. So now let's draw the two circles. And remember I said earlier that all of my XY coordinate pairs are gonna be with respect to the origin, which is at zero, zero. So cl clicking in the command line box, type in the command for circle, which is simply the word circle. Press enter on my keyboard. Now it's prompting for uh, me to specify the center location. So the center location for the left-hand circle is 5.75 in the y direction 
and 11.5, I'm sorry, 5.75 in the x direction and 11.5 in the y direction. Press enter on the keyboard. Now it wants the radius. I specified in my sketch that both of these circles are 12 inches in diameter. So the radius is half of that, which would be 6 inches. Press enter, and there's my first circle. It, LibreCAD thinks that we're still running the circle command, so it's asking for me to specify the center of the second circle. So I can go ahead and do that. It's 17.125 in the x direction and 7.25 in the y direction. And the radius, once again, is half of the diameter. So the radius is 6. And there's my second circle. OK, so as you can see, I'm pretty close here. There's not a lot of space between these two circles. So maybe what I should do is draw both of these circles, a, let's say a quarter of an inch more to the right for the right-hand circle and a quarter of an inch more to the left for the left-hand circle. Okay, so let's do, I'm not going to delete the existing circles. We'll do that after. So I'm going to do another circle command. Press enter and specify the center. So um, the center of the right-hand circle was originally at 17.125. And I'm going to add a 0.25, which is a quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to leave the dimension in the Y direction the same. And, of course, the radius is the same. So there I was able to do some math right in the command line box by taking the previous dimension and adding it, adding a quarter of an inch to it. I didn't actually have to manually do the calculation myself. Okay, so let's do the second circle, which happens to be this one, the left-hand one. So it wants me to specify the center. Originally it was at 5.75, but we're going to add, we're going to subtract because we want the circle to move to the left. So we're going to subtract 0.25, comma, and then we'll leave the y dimension alone, 11.5, and the radius is still 6. And so now you can see that it drew another circle more to the left. So I'm going to hit escape to get back to my selection tool. If I click on this first circle, press delete, and then click on this circle, which is the first one, and click delete. Now you can see I have two circles with significantly more space in between. So the point of all that is even though I had drawn a pencil sketch and put some dimensions on there, you're not married to those dimensions. You can actually do some math in the command line box to move the dimensions around a little bit to get your drawing entities to be where you want them to be. Now we want to work on the four little rectangles down here. But before I actually try to enter in the coordinates for those, I'm actually going to spend a few minutes with a piece of paper and a pencil and figure out where the coordinates of the lower left hand corner and the upper right hand corner of each rectangle need to be with reference to the origin so that I can just type in the numbers and draw the rectangles. All right, so I'm back. I finished figuring out what the coordinate locations are for the four little rectangles that need to go down here. So now all I need to do is type those numbers in and you'll see how quickly I can very accurately draw those four rectangles. So we're going to start with the RECT command. The first corner is going to be here. Second corner. There's the first rectangle. 
Now I'm still running the rectangle command, so I'm just going to move along and put in the next corner. There's the second one. the third one and there's the fourth one so hopefully you're getting the idea that once you have the dimensions all figured out Typing in the commands and the coordinates is very quick, and you can very accurately draw what you need to draw. I think the key is to figure out in advance what all the XY coordinate pairs need to be so that you can just enter in that data into the command box and, and execute your drawing commands. If you figure it out in advance, then it moves very, very quickly. A couple of things to just kind of reinforce, just because these drawing entities were drawn using the command line, that doesn't mean that you can't select them, move them, uh, rotate them, delete them, make copies, and so on. So for example, if I wanted to put four more of these, let's say, up here somewhere, I just selected all four of them. I'm going to use Move and Copy. And it wants a reference point. So let's click on this snap right here. interesting seems to go away right there let me click right here I'm going to keep the original and I'm just going to make one and there they are right there okay so let's see if I can move them a little bit closer to where I wanted them to go so I turn on my snap snap Turn off the snap, and now let's move them kind of right up somewhere around here. And I'm going to delete the original, which is the one that's highlighted. I'm only going to make one copy. And now if I escape, there's my, there's my copy. So the point to that is that even though these entities were drawn using the command line, you can still treat them like any other entity that was drawn with your mouse. So hopefully this gets you started. There's a lot of possibilities. I hope you can see that. Um, enjoy.